It's the Black Real Estate Dialogue. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. So we just dove right in. My husband and I bought a duplex. We ran the most basic numbers you could ever imagine. Thankfully, it was actually a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't really know that. Um, and once we saw how much money we could make, I was like, oh, we need to do this again. So we just, we did it again and again. We um, ended up house hacking that house hack. So we bought a duplex. We didn't house hack that duplex. We bought a fourplex. We house hacked that. That house hack really set us up to be able to leave our government jobs. So we retired from the nine to five life. Um, I was 32 at the time. And um, our plan was to be nomads and travel the world for about a year, but we ended up being pregnant. And so we were like, okay, change of plans. And we moved to San Antonio, uh, San Antonio, Texas to be closer to family. But that's like the really short cliff note version of like our real estate story. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And uh, something that I'd like to, to, to discuss more about that is, you know, a lot of people, it, it seems like for a lot of us, it's out of reach. The Even the yeah. thought that we could one, buy a property, or two, you know, build our portfolio to a point where it can help us move on to other things, like write, yeah. write books and, and, and work on our businesses and things of that nature. Um, so can you talk about just, you know, when you realized that you two were on that track and it's something that was possible, like, what was that like? Man, once we realized that, like, buying a rental property was something we could do, it's like, why didn't anybody tell us this? Why is this something that our families weren't talking about and encouraging us to do? And I think our generation, we were like fit into this, like we had to fit into a box, go to school, get a good job, work. Like that was the American dream. Our generation now is shifting that. So I feel like for our kids, they're going to feel differently about it, right? They're going to have different options. But anyway, um, once we got that first rental property, we had a tenant in one side already. We inherited a tenant. The other side was empty. By a complete, in, in complete desperation, we ended up putting the property on Airbnb. We made, I think, $4,000 in a month. And we're like, what? We could replace our salaries. That was only on one side of the duplex. So this is right. Washington, D.C. So it's mm -hmm. a huge tourist city. Um, so you have to keep that in mind when I'm talking numbers, D.C. numbers ain't going to be like Detroit numbers and yeah. ain't going to be like <laughs> Cleveland numbers. Like, it, it, it's really real in DC, right? Yeah. So, um, and I had always been trying to leave my job. I always hated my job. This is not nine to five bashing for anyone listening. If you love your job, that is a blessing. I did not. And I was always side hustling, but side hustling never got me free because there's only so much time in the day, right? I was always still exchanging time for money. When I saw that money from the rental property, I'm like, oh, we can, like, I'm ready to go now. Like I want to leave. Yeah. Um, and so we just decided to like really scale and and make the moves to leave. But I think that was it for us seeing that we could replace our salary so easily, like replace our, our monthly income so easily. Definitely, definitely. And how did it feel like just that last day walking out? Like just knowing that, you know, we can move on. I can, I can move on to the next chapter of my life and, and we can uh, just do other things. Like what, what did that feel like? And was it hard to stay motivated? in the last couple of weeks? It was, you know, okay, well, I'm gonna answer your first question first. I can't remember if the last time we talked, was I still working or not? Probably not. I probably had just left, Yeah. but we actually probably could have left about three years before we did. And in some moments it was frustrating because I was really ready to go. My husband's very patient. He's like, no, let's wait. Because as you know, like with real estate, there's ups and downs, there's mm -hmm. tenant, there's a vacancy, there's turnover, there's like, repairs and stuff like that so he's like let's make sure we really have enough savings and we really know what we're doing so that when we do leave we're not like strapped for cash and stuff mm -hmm. like that um and so there were days at work when it felt good to know that like I don't have to be here like I'm here and y'all give me a lot of crap today but I could walk out right now like just to have that power felt really good um and then I think what, what was your the other question how did it feel to leave? And then, yeah. So, um, so it was like the last day, like how did, how did that feel? Oh yeah. It was crazy because I put in my two weeks notice actually the day before the government shut down. Remember that government shut down. And I think it was like 2009. 
I think it happened in two days, 2018, or, mm. and then it carried in. Anyway, it was like 30 days the government was shut down. I, I didn't know that it was going to happen. And I put my two weeks notice in and the government ended up being shut down. So it didn't get processed. And so we were literally just like at home. Wow. <laughs> Um, and so it got processed, like once the government opened back up and then I actually, um, that was the beginning of 2019. So I actually left in February of 2019 after that long, um, government shutdown. It was crazy. So I got a few extra weeks of paycheck that I <laughs> wasn't expecting because they had to back, back pay us. <laughs> right. Definitely. Definitely. It's crazy. So how's it, how's it been since then, since 2019, like how, how's real estate been for you? Have you change anything um, that you've done? Have you noticed any changes in, in the markets uh, where you invest uh, back east? What, what's that been like? Yeah, the pandemic um, was really tough for us because we moved to San Antonio month, like literally a couple of months before the pandemic hit. And we had, of course, no idea, like nobody did. Mm -hmm. We thought that we'd be able to, our plan was really to like go back and forth freely between here and DC and like check on our properties and stuff. My husband's a very like hands-on kind of person. We self-manage. So, mm -hmm. um, but when we, we had a small baby, like a brand new baby, uh, it didn't feel safe to travel. And so it, we went like almost a year without even laying eyes on our properties, which is not normal for us. And, um, we ended up selling two properties, which honestly, like at first, I didn't really want to talk about it. This is like the first time I'm actually talking about it because mm -hmm. I feel like I had to uphold this, this idea of like, never sell like yeah. this and that, like you shouldn't sell, but it was just the right thing for us because we weren't able to like get there as much as we could. Those two properties were a little more high maintenance. Um, and it was a seller's market and we got paid very well for them. I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. So, um, and so now we're like shifting our focus to invest closer to home. We're here in San Antonio now for the foreseeable future. Um, and so that was the good thing though about the pandemic is that none of our tenants were late because of it. None of our tenants were not paying rent because of it. I know a lot of landlords had tenants that weren't paying or paying mm -hmm. late or all that kind of stuff. We didn't have that problem at all. We had section eight tenants, which that money was coming no matter what. Um, we had travel nurses, you know, which they, we're getting paid more during the pandemic. We also had like our regular tenants worked for the government. And so government was still getting paid. So thankfully, thank God, we still had all of our tenants paying. It was just like for us not being able to get there and yeah. getting the offers we did. We're like, yeah, that's one of the benefits of ownership though, honestly, is that you do have options. Like mm -hmm. you can cash out, you know, if you want to. And we did do that. So um, really though, uh my life now is completely run by my two-year-old so it's like yeah. what do you do I'm like I chase a two-year-old around all day <laughs> <laughs> um thankfully I have the freedom to do that but yeah. it's wild it is legitimately really crazy <laughs> I bet I bet um <clears throat> so I want to go back to something that you said I think is very important so you know a lot of people feel like, oh, you should never sell. I'm never selling. Uh, yeah. I'm always hold my properties. And I think it's important to have diversity of thought. I think it's important to, to, to look at things from different angles. And you also never know like what position you might be in where it's like, hmm, maybe it is a good time to sell. Um, so can you uh, talk a bit more about that? Because um, you did mention you, you felt like you had to like uphold this not selling and, and um, talk to us about like, what led what led to the point where you're like you know what this is actually a great decision for us right now and and this is how we're going to proceed and of course I mean, it worked out pretty well for you in, in this market <laughs> it did it did uh so we started feeling like okay real estate is considered passive income right but mm -hmm. we all know that it's not always passive right there's going to be like weeks and days when you do nothing and there are some weeks when you do a lot but for us, it started feeling really stressful, like, you know, um, with these two particular properties. And it wasn't it wasn't that stressful for us when we were there. And so because I think you have properties out of state, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's where your whole portfolio is out of state. Yeah. For some properties, for some portfolios, for some market situations, it works. And for us, for these two, we're just like, oh, I don't know. We just didn't feel it didn't feel as passive as it should have been. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so we're like 
let's just let it go. Like, um, so that's how we ended up like coming to that decision when it wasn't as passive as we wanted it to feel. And we felt like we could cash out and do other things and kind of live a lifestyle that we preferred. Um, and that's the power of it. And we looked at, like, when we looked at the return on our investment, it was insane. What's up y'all? Sam here from the Black Real Estate Dialogue podcast. Thank you so much for watching another episode. Definitely take a moment to subscribe. Make sure you like this video. Also visit our website, blackrealestatedialogue.com and follow on Instagram at Black Real Estate Dialogue. Talk to you soon.